Today on the table, I've got a rifle that I've been looking for for a long time. This is a Marlin Model 60 semi-automatic 22 long rifle. But this particular Model 60 is one that most folks say is the best variant of the Marlin Model 60. Stick around. I found this gun, like a lot of folks find guns, uh, by going into a pawn shop and having something to trade. Uh, I had a Ruger Wrangler um, 22 single action that for the life of me, I could not figure out how to shoot it well. Uh, it kept shooting low and uh, it was the same week Ruger announced the introduction of their, uh, their uh, Wrangler with the interchangeable cylinders. So we had 22, 22 mag and adjustable sights. So I said, well, I'm probably gonna pick one of those up anyway. So I'm gonna take this and trade it in. And behind the counter at the uh, pawn shop, they had this guy. This is, again, a Marlin Model 60. Uh, this one was made during the uh, time period where they had the last round hold open on the bolt, but still had the full length mag tube. So this is capable of holding 18 rounds of 22 long rifle. Um, there have been several variations of the Marlin Model 60. Um, I have two. I've got one that was made, um, I believe in 2010, that is the 19 inch barrel with the 14 round uh, mag tube. And um, that's my go-to squirrel rifle. Love that rifle. Uh, but when I saw this one sitting there, I knew I had to have it. Um, so I rescued it. It was nice and rusty. Uh, spent a few hours going through cleaning it. Uh, these guns, like many 22 rifles, get dirty very quickly. Uh, it was no exception. When I opened it up, got inside, uh, you could scrape off the, uh, the gunpowder residue with your fingernail in there. So uh, it took a little while with some ballastol and a toothbrush to uh, really dig out all of that stuff in there. So today, uh, we're just gonna shoot a couple groups with it. Um, we're going to install this guy, Simmons, uh, four power scope, the 22 mag four by 32 millimeter. And we're gonna run several different types of CCI ammunition through this to see what group's the best. Looking through a little closer, we see that, yeah, this thing's got some use marks on it. Got some rust marks on the barrel. I was able to get a lot of it off, but there's still some, uh, you know, some pitting in some places. This one has the single piece um, throat here instead of the, uh, the older ones have like a two piece uh, block that goes right there. This is a single one, supposed to be a lot more uh, robust. And that's it. This, uh, this serial number on this one marks it at a 1988 model. So still well before Marlin had to go in and shorten that mag tube. So for a while you had these that had the full length barrel but a shorter mag tube and then they said, hey, let's even it up. So they chopped it off at 19 inches. Now I've always liked a tube loading 22. The first 22 rifle I ever shot, um, as far as I remember, was an old Remington Fieldmaster. And 22. I know Remington has sort of co-opted the Fieldmaster now for their new 870 line, but uh, that was a 22 rifle. Tube loading, slide action 22. Very, very fun to shoot. And for whatever reason, I, don't know, I, I took to tube loading rifles at that point and have always preferred them to, to magazine fed 22s. Uh, so what we're going to do is take 10 shots. This is some Aguila uh, hollow point uh, ammo. We're gonna take um, 10 shots at a paper plate that's 30 yards away just to see how on the irons are and how well this rifle groups. And if we have any uh, issues with this Aguila stuff, uh, usually even in my other um, Marlin 60, uh, some are duds and that's just the way bulk uh, 22 is. Uh, so we're gonna take some shots uh, with our irons at one of these paper plates. Then we're gonna slap the scope on there, get it sighted in. Uh, with the same uh, Aguila stuff, and then we're going to shoot some CCI. So let's take some shots with this Aguila. Again, 30 yards, we're going to go for the uh, paper plate on the right. And can't really see where these are going to hit, so we'll just have to get our after report.
Man, oh man. No issues there. Let's see what it looks like downrange. Not a terrible grouping at 30 yards with open sights. Um, my point of aim, as best as I could, was right in the middle here. So, I mean, really, any of these even being high, that's just me uh, not being used to those sights. But, hey, that's a, that's a pretty good group out of that Marlin. I mean, it's got the 22-inch barrel, micro-groove rifling, all that fun stuff. Uh, that's a, I'm very happy with that. Now we're going to put the scope on it and see if we can't uh, get everything inside of this circle. All right, now we've got the scope on, and I've got nine rounds loaded into the tube. Uh, we're going to do a couple three-shot groups, see where uh, we are at on the uh, left uh, paper plate there, and hopefully be able to get it all reined in. So let's see, uh, see how long this will take. And oh man, much easier to see out of the scope though. Gosh. None of those even hit the paper plate. And I'm not quite sure where they hit. I know they hit the uh, cardboard because I could hear it. Um, we're gonna lob three more down there. I think I may have figured it out. I think what I was hearing was the bullet hitting the woods behind the target. And I think we were way, way, way off to the left. So I've cranked it back a good bit to the right. And we'll see how the next couple group. I should be able to be on paper now. Let's see. Okay, those all look great through the scope, but I'm going to take you down there uh, so you can see what they look like. Yeah, you can see where I was really tearing up my target here. But we finally got her dialed in. I think these are the last three shots I took. I could be wrong, but I feel like they were. Um, yeah, I was shooting way back there at my 50, or, uh, 50 yard targets. But we've got it all dialed in here. So what we're gonna do now is try some different CCI ammo on each one of these targets and see uh, how they group in this gun. So I've got some splatter targets down there and we're gonna shoot some CCI mini mags. We're gonna shoot some subsonics. We're gonna do some stingers and then some quiet just for fun. Now I have written on the targets up there which, are, which these are gonna be. Um, for the subsonics, I actually wrote uh, SV for standard velocity, but um, but yeah, it, it's subsonic. So, uh, and then of course our uh, stinger and quiet. So we're going to start with the mini mags. More than likely, these are going to be what I shoot the most out of it anyway. These are going to be the round nose, the target rounds, and we'll do we'll do five shot groups with these. Okay, mini mag, target, 40 grain. Okay, now to the subsonics. You know, the, uh, really the general consensus is that subsonics should group better at longer distances because they don't break the sound barrier and then they don't have to, you know, come back through subsonic. So there's a lot less wind interference, but eh. I'm no bullet scientist. So we'll just see how they shoot.
Next we'll do the stingers. So the stingers uh, kind of introduce a new problem in that the case is just a little bit longer on these. So we may see that these have issues cycling. Um, on, my, uh, on my newer Marlin, these shoot pretty, pretty well, but who's to say, all right? These are the exact opposite of subsonic. And lastly, the quiets. Now, the quiets absolutely will not cycle. They will fire, they will extract, but you have to manually extract them. It's not just going to pop out of there. I have shot these out of this gun already, so I don't know exactly how they'll group, but I do know that you've got to manually cycle them. It even says it on the box. Okay, let's go check out those groups. Well, there may be something to the whole subsonic might be more accurate. So these were our regular mini mags. Again, I said these were standard velocity. They're not, they're subsonics. And wow, that's a very good group. And it's pretty much the same point of aim. Just got to nudge it over to the, uh, to the left just a little bit. The stingers, uh, kind of as I expected, this was the first shot and I got really excited about that. And then the rest of them kind of went over here. So, I mean, I'd hate for that to be the flyer, but eh, it kind of looks like that's what it is. And then our quiets yeah, a little flyer down here, but not a bad group there either. But it sure does look like uh, this one likes that uh, subsonic stuff and it cycles them well. So this may be my squirrel, uh, my squirrel getter. All right, now just for fun, we're gonna shoot some of these targets I've got set up at 50 yards. To wrap everything up here, this again is the Marlin Model 60. Um, you know, ever since Ruger bought out Marlin and started making the rifles again, folks have been wondering when the new ones are going to hit the shelves. And really, I mean, they're making the rifles right now. They're going to make them the most money. So uh, while they're also making the 1022, I wouldn't expect to see this brand new rifle again for some time. This rifle was one of the most popular semi-auto rifles and still is. There were over 11 million of these made uh, since they started making them in 1960. Uh, so there are no shortage of them on the used market. Like I said, just in the last couple of years, I've been able to find two of them. 
Um, so maybe finding one in this specific configuration may be a little more difficult, but since there were so many of them made, um, it's very hard to go into a used gun store and not see one of these. Uh, if you have not already, uh, please do subscribe to the channel and also follow us on Instagram. We post behind the scenes photos and videos from these shoots as well as uh, cooking videos uh, and other short form content that does not make its way over to YouTube. Thanks again everybody for stopping by.